If there is no struggle, there is no progress. The Reverend Frederick Douglass, an AME Zion minister. A blessed Black History Month to each of you. A blessed Communion Sunday on this first Sunday of February to each of you. And it is Jersey Day and a happy, blessed Super Bowl Sunday to everyone. Let us pray. All wise and eternal God, our creator and sustainer, we call upon your name now, inviting your spirit to overshadow us, both the speaker as well as the hearers. Bless now, Father, the meditations of this heart, the words that will come forth from this mouth. Let them be found pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and redeemer. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah, we do pray, and everyone said together, Amen. Today is February the 7th. In 1926, on this very day, Carter G. Woodson established the first Negro History Week. And it was done to highlight, according to his words, the achievements of the Negro worldwide. Ever since 1926, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History has provided a theme for Black History Month. The theme for 2021 is the Black Family, Representation, Identity, and Diversity. We're going to talk about that during this month. Every day in the life of every Black Christian family, especially with every Christian family, and every believer, we stand daily at the crossroads of our faith, making decisions whether we will yield to the leading of the Spirit or whether we will yield to the pull of the flesh. This month, we will celebrate the sheroes, the heroines, and the heroes of ancient and modern Black history. And we will celebrate their achievements as well as their habits that strengthened them during the time that they faced their crossroads as well. And we will highlight the attributes that made them icons in our history, world history, and American history. And especially this week, this particular week, first week in February, we remember the 86th birthday a man born in Mobile, Alabama. We know him as a courageous trailblazer, Henry Louis Aaron. We also call him Hank, the Hammer, number 44, played for the Atlanta Braves. The black man who broke Babe Ruth's record in 1974, 755 home runs if you don't remember. And we celebrate the fact that for three decades, he hit more home runs than any other player in baseball history. We thank you, Brother Hank, for showing us the attitudes and the attributes of a champion, both on the field, in the community, and in the history books. This morning, I want you to turn with me to the Super Bowl book of the Bible. Is in the New Testament, one that is sometimes often not preached from, the book of Revelations. Revelations 2, verse 10. This is the one book of the Bible that guarantees a blessing for just reading it. Read Revelations 1 and verse 3. You'll see what I'm talking about. So our scripture this morning, again, Revelations 2, verse 10. King James Version reads thusly, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. The Message Bible says it a little bit differently and profoundly. The Message Bible, Revelations 2, verse 10. Fear nothing in the things you're about to suffer, but stay on guard. I'll hear that again. Stay on guard. Fear nothing, 
The devil is about to throw you in jail for a time of testing, 10 days. It won't last forever. Don't quit, this is what it says, don't quit, even if it costs you your life. Stay there believing, and I have a life crown sized and ready just for you. For a few moments on this Super Bowl Sunday, the first Sunday of Black History Month, think with me on this subject, the attributes of a Super Bowl Christian. The attributes of a Super Bowl Christian. This scripture represents one of seven individual letters that Jesus Christ sends to the seven churches of Asia Minor, written at the time when John is writing on the Isle of Patmos. This second letter is most appropriate for this particular Super Bowl Sunday in this time of pandemic and on this Communion Sunday of Black History Month. For the letter is to the church at Smyrna. That means myrrh or bitterness. For this church was persecuted constantly, even living with death threats on a daily basis. Very much like these critical times that we are living in, where death is all around us and doubt and uncertainty knock on the door on a daily basis. These Christians, just like any Super Bowl champion, had to develop and demonstrate certain attributes and habits for daily survival and ultimate victory. The Christians at Smyrna were bitterly attacked by the Jews, and this continued right into their martyrdom of many saints and believers under the ten periods of Roman emperors, Dilatian, all the way to Constantine. The Caesar cult that emerged caused the Christians to suffer a great deal because they would not and refused to worship Caesar. They refused to bow. Sounds like somebody else we know. Polycarp, the bishop of the church, was martyred and killed in 156 AD because he refused to call Caesar Lord. Their persecution, even their deaths, were often entertainment for the masses in local arenas and coliseums as they sought to snuff out and strangle this new faith called Christianity. Though their sufferings, their imprisonment, their persecutions, their tribulation, every believer, including us today, should be encouraged by the faithfulness that they lived unto death thereby receiving the promise of the Christ, a crown of eternal life. Now, it's about six hours before the greatest sports event in the year begins. Super Bowl 55. Aha! The Kansas City Chiefs versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Andy Reid versus Bruce Arians. The Geritol crew, that's right, I said Geritol. The Geritol crew, the two of the oldest head coaches to ever square off in a Super Bowl. One is 62, the other is 68, respectively. Then Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes, where Brady could become the oldest quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl. And Mahomes could make more than just black history. You know he is a black quarterback. He could be the youngest player to win multiple Super Bowl trophies, especially back to back. Woo! It's going to be a good game. In truth, it is more than a game. First, it provides a sense of normalcy for all of us. My God. After all that we have endured over the last almost year, and second, it is the biggest television event of the new year. Before the game, it's the food. Lord have mercy. No less than $55 million is expected to be spent, even 
during a pandemic, even during a pandemic, and the food alone is going to be a lot of people's attention. The big game, even in a pandemic, twice as much pizza will be consumed on this day than any other day of the year. Lord have mercy, bring me some pepto bismol Because the pandemic experts are encouraging us to maintain pandemic protocols. Be safe, my brothers and sisters. Be safe for everyone's safety. So that today will not become a super spreader event. Amen? So enjoy both the game and the $5 million commercials. My Lord. But just remember, life is very much like a football. Let me say that again. Pandemic life is very much like a football game. In this pandemic life, just like a football, you don't know which way things are going to bounce. So yes, in the next six hours, large men will face off <laughs> across a line of scrimmage. A call will be made, level will be slapped, the bodies will collide and crash, and for four 15-minute quarters, men will battle with ex and expend enormous amounts of energy, hurricane efforts to move a piece of pig skin down a field of grass that's a hundred yards long. And in the end, one team will emerge victorious. Just like the stock market and game stock. Today, fortunes will be made and fortunes will be lost. Unofficial estimates say that the sports betting has topped $4.3 billion as of yesterday afternoon. Tonight, Americans will be glued to their television sets, all waiting to answer the same question. Who will win the game? One way to answer such a question is to ask, what does it take to become a Super Bowl champion? What separates the champion from the Bush leaguer? What creates a conqueror's attitude versus an attitude of mediocrity? Can you tell me? Let me tell you what this word tells us. The winner of tonight's game, and every winner in this pandemic must exhibit three, three specific attributes. The team that has the greatest desire. The team that has the most discipline. The team that has the greatest dedication, which means focus, commitment, and faithfulness. That team, whoever it may be, will win Super Bowl 55. These three simple attributes that define a Super Bowl champion are the same traits that define a Super Bowl Christian. Desire, discipline, and dedication. I call them the three D's of victory. It's right here in the text. Fear none of those things, Revelations 2, verse 10, 10a. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. The Message Bible says it like this. Fear nothing. You need to look the pandemic in the eye after all these months and still say, fear nothing. Fear nothing, the Message Bible goes on, in the things that you're about to suffer. But stay on guard. Fear nothing. That's the first D, that inner desire to stay focused on your goal, to stay focused on protecting yourself, to stay focused on watching over your family, to stay focused on your dreams, to stay focused on your aspirations and your hopes. That's that Mark 11, 24 desire. What so things you do, what so things, so ever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. 
Revelations 2, 10b. It says, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation. Message Bible says it a little bit different. Same verse, Revelations 2, verse 10b. The devil is about to throw you in jail for a, listen to this, a time of testing. Ten days in the scripture, but when I read it, the spirit said, that's the same for us, ten months. Who ever thought we would be in this pandemic already this long? I thought way back in March and April, it'd only be two or three months, but here we are, about to be a full year in just a few more weeks. But it was a time of testing. And I'm going to talk about this over the whole month of February. Believe me, if you're still here and God has blessed you to still be alive, you are a chosen one of the Most High God to be an example at such a time like this. Don't take that for granted and give God all of the praise. So yes, the Message Bible says it will be a time of testing. Ten days, I'm saying ten months. But look, the scripture says it won't it will come to pass. It will come to an end. This is the second thing. Discipline. Just having the discipline. Making sure you go into your word every day. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. Making sure you are praying constantly throughout the day. Keeping your eyes looking up. Earth, when it passes, keep your head to the sky. That's what we must do on a daily basis. That's discipline. This tribulation, this time of testing is best understood by the words of this great Zionite, Reverend Frederick Douglass. Douglass said it like this, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom yet deprecate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They will rain without thunder and lightning. This struggle may be moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. My God, what powerful words. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It takes discipline. Jesus said it like this. You still need that discipline of faith. Christ living on the inside. Jesus said it like this. In this world, you will have tribulation. The Greek word is tribulation, which means bitterness. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of what? Good courage. He says, for I have already shown you I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. The last point, Revelations 2, 10c. He says, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Message Bible says it again. It's, listen to it. Very good. He says, don't quit. I'm going to say it again. Don't quit. It's discipline. Even if it costs you your life, Stay there believing, and I have a life crown sized and ready for you. That's the third thing, my brothers and sisters, and I'm finished. It guarantees victory, dedication, commitment, faithfulness, dog, dog, bulldog, won't let it go determination. That kind of dedication, unswerving faithfulness and commitment to the cause of Christ. No matter what. When I played basketball, UNCC, but all the way back when I was in high school, my coach, Bob Farr, always used to tell us a little something. It never made a whole lot of sense back then. I thought it was kind of, you know, goofy and dopey, but, but he said, the only way you're gonna win the game is to stay in the game. <laughs> it's so profound and simple, but that's what we've got to do even at this time. The winner of the Super Bowl is going to do the same thing. The winner of us going through this pandemic, I'm grateful for all the things that are taking place. But my God, we have got to stay in the game. That 
is dedication. That dedication believes that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are a lender, not a borrower. Deuteronomy 28. Faithfulness, dedication to know that Romans 8.28 is an everyday experience. We know that all things work together for good for them who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. You got to walk and believe that even though it may not look right, God can turn it into your favor. It will work out all right. All things continue to work together for good. Brothers and sisters, faithfulness, that dedication, desire, discipline, dedication, the kind of faithfulness that the writer of this book of Revelations is not John's words, is Christ's words given and spoken to John for us in 2021. The kind of faithfulness that John had on the Isle of Patmos, exiled, in prison, by himself, tragic conditions, in spite of the turmoil, in spite of the tragic circumstances and conditions that surround him in Revelations 19.6. His desire, his discipline, and his dedication kicked in. He made him throw his hands up, and he said these words, Hallelujah! The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. He still reigns. He's still in control. So as we look into this Black History Month, as we begin it on this communion Super Bowl Jersey Sunday, would you declare this with me as I close on this first Sunday? Just say it and believe it in your gut, in your spirit. Hallelujah! The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Yes, he's still in control. And I pray that during this week, I pray that each of you would seek his will, that you would demonstrate your faith by demonstrating the attributes of a Super Bowl Christian. The three D's of victory, desire, discipline, and dedication. We pray God's blessings upon each of you. We pray his favor upon you as you enter into this most historic Black History Month 2021. We love you, God loves you, and ain't nothing you can do about it because I love you most. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, God bless you, amen.